Tampa's most watched station. This is Campaign 2016 on WCCO4 News. And they are off. The September sprint to the White House is underway. With a little more than two months until Election Day campaigns, buckle your seatbelt and hang on tight. Campaign 2016 has been a roller coaster already, and the campaigns are kicking into overdrive. Tonight, we'll break down the messages behind the political attack ads you're seeing on TV and give them a reality check. We'll chat with Minnesota Congressman Tom Emmer in studio. And the Saints are getting into politics in a way only the St. Paul Ball Club can. I'm Esme Murphy. And I'm Pat Kessler. Thank you for joining us. Today, on this somber anniversary of 9 11, both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump visited Ground Zero. Mrs. Clinton became overheated at the 9-11 ceremony. She was forced to leave early, according to her campaign. She was taken to her daughter Chelsea's apartment in New York. Clinton's campaign reported she recovered quickly. She came outside and said she was feeling much better. On 9-11, 2001, Hillary Clinton represented New York State in the U.S. Senate, and Donald Trump was, of course, a New Yorker running his billion dollar business empire. Their appearances took place amidst a growing furor over former Secretary Clinton's remarks Friday night, labeling half of Trump's supporters as a, quote, basket of deplorables. You could put half of Trump's supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Donald Trump and Republicans were quick to respond. Wow, Hillary was, Clinton was so insulting to my supporters, said Trump on Twitter. Millions of amazing, hardworking people. I think it's going to cost her at the polls. And Clinton has acknowledged the stumble backing off by saying she was grossly generalistic and that's never a good idea. But. She also very, very deliberately said she should not have used the words half of all Trump supporters. Half of all Trump supporters. Come on now. Uh, That's what, what, half what's the, the country, proper? Yeah, the quarter of the country. So I don't know if she meant 40% or 30%, but a large number of Trump supporters can't be good for the Hillary Clinton campaign. You know, I think this is a huge mistake, Pat. I think what Mrs. Clinton is failing to understand, and this comes across loud and clear, is that there are a lot of people who are supporting Donald Trump who are considering voting for Donald Trump, not because they're so enthusiastic about Donald Trump, but because they think he's at least better than she is. And do you really want to force them into that if you're Hillary Clinton? This remark is similar to remarks we've had in the past, including from President Obama in his first campaign, where he talked about uh, people who cling to their guns and their religion. Also, Mitt Romney, 47% of Americans, that 47% remark, this may fit right into that. Absolutely. I think it could even be worse. I think this is a huge problem. This will stick with her the rest of the campaign. But on the other hand, what if she meant it? She doubled down on it. She wants people to know that she thinks a lot of these folks are misogynistic, racist. She wants people to think that maybe this is a way to actually get her supporters out, to motivate her supporters a little more, because she wanted it. I think it's going to hurt her. Absolutely. All right. Well, late this week, Democrats tried to get Donald Trump off the ballot here in Minnesota. Yeah, the DFL party chairman filed a petition late on Friday with the state Supreme Court claiming Republicans didn't follow the rules when choosing their presidential electors. The Minnesota Republican Party releasing a statement calling the lawsuit frivolous and baseless. It went on to say, in part, Donald Trump got on our ballot fair and square, and it's outrageous that the Democratic Party would actually try to rig the election this way. Litigation filed by the GOP calls it untimely and factually basis. We're talking about a rigged election. The Donald Trump supporters say this election's rigged. What does this say? Well, I can tell you, I've talked to a number of legal experts who say, nice try, DFL party chair Ken Martin. It's not going to work. That there are a number of Supreme Court precedents that basically say that they, you can't, the state can't 
sort of impose its beliefs in this way, and also this is being filed too late. Yeah, but doesn't this fuel the narrative that the election is rigged, as Donald Trump, as his supporters have been saying from the very beginning? They're trying to lower our vote. They're trying to get rid of us. And this could open a hornet's nest, if it's successful, a hornet's nest for the Democrats. Be careful what you wish for. I think, I, I don't think it's going to be successful. I also think it shows how disorganized the Trump campaign is. They don't have the infrastructure in place here in Minnesota and other states across the country. And there could be other mistakes like this that follow. And this is the, uh, the Trump campaign, but also the Republican Party here in Minnesota. Uh, what is the organization? What is the coordination of these campaigns? Something I think we'll talk about a little bit more. Absolutely. All right, well, we have much more ahead, but first, here's a look at the week that was in Washington. <coughs> Clashes over Iraq, work history, and hay fever. Clinton's seasonal allergies briefly got the better of her on the plane and in Cleveland. <laughs> Every time I think about Trump, I get allergic. Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, tweeted that Clinton must be allergic to media. Finally spent a minute with them. Immediately after taking office, I will ask my generals to present to me a plan within 30 days to defeat and destroy ISIS. Is Trump's plan asking someone else for their plan? No. If I win, I don't want to broadcast to the enemy exactly what my but plan is. Tensions rise at the G20 summit. Putin pulled back at the last minute from a ceasefire deal in Syria. As world leaders lock eyes in an icy stare down. There is plenty of very real tension behind closed doors. Bad timing for a brain hiccup. What would you do if you were elected? about Aleppo. Libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson stumbles on the conflict in Syria. And what is Aleppo? You're kidding. No. Johnson said he thought it was an acronym and blanked. 